Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the tune Airmail Special. This was written by Benny Goodman and his band members, including Charlie Christian on the electric guitar. So Charlie Christian was one of the first electric guitar players to, to be recorded, especially in the jazz world. So if you're new to jazz guitar, you definitely want to go back and check out those early recordings of Charlie Christian, um, especially with the Benny Goodman band. And this is one of his iconic tunes, Airmail Special. It's a relatively simple tune, especially the A section, but the bridge gets a bit more complicated, and it's actually pretty difficult to execute on guitar because it is played at a pretty quick tempo. So let's break down the A section first. We have a simple C major triad along with some um, C major pentatonics and C major scale uh, uses as well. So here's the A section. <laughs> Pretty simple, okay? So it's not that complicated. It's just a C major triad with the octave. It's gonna go down the pentatonic and then at the very end, you have that little, almost an enclosure or a little cadence, which you have the C, G, B, C. Okay, so that's the A section. You're gonna play that twice and then get into the bridge. Now, the bridge, is pretty interesting. It uses a lot of diminished arpeggios. Okay, we do that again. Okay, so that, you can think of that as a C diminished arpeggio or an A diminished arpeggio. Really, in a diminished uh, seventh chord, any one of the four notes can be considered the, the root. In this case, we're going to think of it as C, though, because the bass is playing a C note. So it's a C diminished. We play that a few times, and then we're going to take that down chromatically. Okay, so it's the same shape, just going down chromatically down the neck. Now this part's really interesting. What's happening here is we have a C diminished chord. You can kind of see the shape here. All right, you can see that typical C diminished shape. And we're going to be going into this B half diminished or B minor 7 flat 5 shape, which is related to a G7 chord. So it kind of makes it a G9 chord. So it's kind of tricky to, to grab these notes, but let's do that last part slowly. Pretty interesting line. Um, I have a feeling that Charlie Christian wrote that part because it lines up with the guitar so well. It lines up with those chord shapes. Um, that's not saying that it's easy to play. It's definitely not easy to play, but you can see the chord shapes in that line. That's what makes me think that Charlie Christian probably had a hand in writing that part in particular, possibly the whole bridge as well. So let's do that one more time. So that's the bridge. After that, we get back to the A section and you just play the same thing as before. And there you go. That's the melody for Airmail Special. So now let's talk about the chords a little bit. During the melody, 
there's not really many chords happening during the A section, it's just the bass. But once we get to the bridge, we have those diminished chords, the piano comes in with um, actually playing some of those chords and, and arpeggiating some of those notes. But we're going to go through the chords for the entire song, just so you have it. Um, and you can play it if you want to play the solo section. So once the solos come in, you can start strumming the guitar. And I would recommend doing a four down strums, like uh, Charlie Christian would do. So it's just playing quarter notes. Okay, so let's go through these chords real quick. We're going to do very simple chord shapes. We have C6. Okay, just the root, third, and six. Then we have A minor 7. Make sure you're muting that A string there. Then you have D minor 7th. See, we're using very simple chord shapes. Um, usually three notes or so. There's your G7. Okay. Now you, you can also play the C6 up here. And I do this in the backing track once I go from C6 to C7. Like that. And then we get to F6. We're going to use the same shape. Same shape that we're using for C6. There's an F sharp diminished. Right here, you can kind of think of this as a um, as a G sus. I'm kind of thinking of it as a D minor seventh, but with the G in the bass. There's another G seven right there, and you can resolve to C six. Okay, so you can use all those chord shapes in the A section. Now for the B section, it's actually pretty simple. You really just need this diminished shape that one diminished shape and you can take it down chromatically okay and then at the end we play two seventh chords we have an a flat seven same shape as the g7 which is next and there you go that's the b section then you get back into the a section and at that point when you get back to the a section you're going to play the same chord so the c6 um, a minor seven d minor seven g7 Etc. So you can you can see the chords if you watch the first part of the video you'll see the chord names at the top so you'll see the chord names going through with the melody so I recommend you learn these chord shapes then go back and try to watch the chords as it goes through and then just try to play them try to strum if there's two chords in a measure you're just going to strum each chord twice that's one two three four so just keep that steady quarter note pulse throughout the entire thing. Now, like I said, during the melody of the A section, you might not want to play chords. In fact, in the backing track, I'm just playing octaves, kind of what the bass is playing. So just walking around the C major scale for the most part, kind of hitting some of the, the notes of each chord, but not really focusing on strumming the full chords because the melody is just C. It's just a C major um, triad, pretty much. So you don't really need to play all the chords underneath it. All right. If you enjoy this video, please check out my Patreon where you can find the backing track that goes along with this, along with the PDF and all the chord diagrams talked about in this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>